On residential streets, many of them are designed to accommodate parked cars, and all they do is they park beside the curb, narrowing the roadway, making it tougher for other drivers to get through the street safely. There's a set of principles and guidelines that you have to know to make sure that you follow as you drive to keep yourself safe so that you can pass your road test, so that once you've passed your road test and you're driving by yourself, you drive predictably and safely to avoid accident in the future. Now, some of the things we need to know about parked cars, and in this case here, we've got a parked car. I'm driving up on a roadway. The speed limit in a residential area is 50, and by no means do you have to go right up to 50. But if it's a nice day out, we should be going 40 or so. If I drive up and I see a parked car, and the parked car is by itself with nothing else, there's no reason to slow just for a parked car. My idea would be to maintain speed, and from a couple houses away, I'm going to signal and shoulder check so I can get safely around that parked car. So I signal and I shoulder check to make sure that no one's in the act of passing me. And guess what? If I slow unnecessarily for this parked car, there's a good chance someone could try to pass me. We shoulder check no matter what because even when you do all your things right and you maintain speed, there could be someone out there exceeding the speed limit in the act of passing you. So we signal, we shoulder check, then we go around the parked car. When we go around the parked car, we have to make sure that we have a door length. One meter is the law that we must give those people one meter of space as we go around the parked car. What if someone was in the car about to open the door? We don't want to be right beside the parked car. Don't feel guilty for driving here just on the other side of the road. Feel guilty if you're on the same side of the road as the parked car invading that one meter. Now, in this case here, you had no oncoming cars, it was safe, you signal, you check, you get out, you leave a meter, you've done a great job, that's how you get around a parked car. But it's not always that easy. Sometimes you'll have multiple parked cars. If you drive up and you signal and check to get away from this parked car, if there is a substantial gap of 8 to 10 houses between these parked cars, basically the idea being, if you can go back in this gap and maintain speed, then you must. You only stay out here if there's more parked cars that you'd have to slow down to go in and out for. That would be silly to go in and out for each parked car if it's a small gap. But when it's a big gap and you take away this parked car, you signal and check, you come back, you maintain your speed, you signal and check to get away, and that's great. Now the big idea when you come back after a parked car is you just maintain speed and you come back right away. If you put on your signal for a moment, coming back and kill it right away, no problem. But honestly, if there's an intersection right here, especially if a car is present, I don't want to put on a signal coming back right here because they might try to leave that stop sign as I'm driving straight through. So use good judgment as to when, when not to, if that's the case. Remember though, we always signal left to get away from the parked car. We use discretion in cases of you know, danger as to when we come back. But I'd really like you to maintain speed coming back. And again, if there's any intersections nearby, we're not signaling to come back. And we just come back right away, we continue on, and when we get to the next situation, we signal and check to get left away from the parked car. Now in this case here, I signaled and checked, I got away from the parked car, and I'm doing my first available left turn. Some people make the mistake of they just stay in this lane and turn left. Is that okay? No. If you have time to come back right after the parked car, and if this intersection is close enough, you could actually signal left when coming back to the right, going around that parked car. You want to turn from the correct lane, if at all possible. The only way we turn from this lane right here is if there was parked cars right up to the intersection, and you had to turn from the wrong lane. But again, if you had a chance to come back to turn, you'd really want to take advantage of that. So that is the case when you've got parked cars and you want to come back to turn before, uh, come back to your lane before you complete that turn. Now this next situation here is what if there's a ton of parked cars and you're right here and you know that to get around here you signal and check, you want to drive out in this lane and you're worried being what if somebody just turned onto the street and I want to continue on here and once I'm here what do I do if somebody gets here and they keep coming? In this case, what you would do 
If you're halfway down, and you're in this case, and you're coming up, and there's an oncoming car, they should wait and let you finish what you're doing. Are they always going to wait and let you finish what you're doing? Chances are no. So in that case, this oncoming car, if they keep coming, you would just slow down, get near the parked cars that it's appropriate, and you stop. If it's a tight three car squeeze, you stop, you let this car squeeze through, and then you can continue on. If it's a really wide street where three cars can comfortably pass, then you don't need to stop, you can all continue on. But on a tight three car squeeze street, you're gonna get near the parked cars and stop. And let's say you're the other guy, you were driving up here and somebody at the last minute, they, as they pull up, you're driving this way and someone from this side decides that they're gonna come and do a three car squeeze, well then you slow near the curb, you stop, you let them squeeze through. So that's the idea between tight three car squeezes, which you don't want to be a part of with momentum. Whoever's moving at the time of the accident would be at fault. So use good judgment, be prepared to wait. And again, if the oncoming cars are waiting the way they should, you just continue on. Now the idea being with cars here, if you were this guy and you saw oncoming cars, you never want to be part of a tight three car squeeze. Again, if three cars can comfortably fit with appropriate space, you would never wait here, you continue on. But when it's a tight three car squeeze situation, you should yield to that oncoming car if it's at all possible. And one more thing with that is in this case here, and I'll just clean up this diagram a little bit. Let's say I've signaled, I check, I get out, I'm driving appropriately. If there was a gap in traffic, let's say there was no parked car right here, I would like to try and use that gap, and here is where I would go high. I'm fully on my side of center, and that's excellent. Again, you don't have to go right up against the curb to hide. You'd be near the center line, and while you're here, signal is on, left signal's on, waiting for the oncoming car. The moment that the oncoming car gets to here, now you can pull out. And see how this oncoming car here protects me from being passed from behind? If I don't shoulder check there, I'm fine. As long as I go right after that I'm protected by this oncoming car, then I can leave at that time. So hopefully that made sense to you. That are some of the main principles with passing parked cars. Remember, you always signal left and shoulder check to get away. If there's an oncoming car that's protecting you, you don't need to shoulder check as long as you did it at the appropriate speed. Be careful with signaling back. Oftentimes it's not required. Again, if I'm turning left, I don't signal right and then left right away. I would just have my left signal on even as I come back to the right. And in a case of uh, there being an intersection with a car that might be coming up, I don't want a signal coming back to misinform them and have them leave the stop sign at an inner, inopportune time that caused an accident. So that's the idea with parked cars, and hopefully all these ideas work for you.